Franklin, uh, Franklin Templeton Investment now joins in. Uh, Anand, good morning. Hi. Always good to have you, but uh, even better to have you, you know, on, on a day like this. Uh, uh, what's your reading of uh, what happened yesterday? And do you think days like yesterday can shake off the confidence in equity market, especially for retail investors who have been a bit of a pillar of strength for the market over the last one year? So what happened yesterday was uh, because of the uh, contagion from the China markets, which we all know. And it had a very specific reason why the markets uh, opened less because of two factors. One was the incoming data point was not very great on the PMI side. Plus, uh, the time period for uh, the, 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 the short sale ban was coming yeah. to an end and therefore it was feared that fresh shorts will be created that. And because of that, there was some bit of a rub off effect on, uh, on India. But I don't think from an Indian investor perspective, anything data point wise, anything incrementally bad happened. It was just a regional rub off, which eventually is kind of cooled off a little bit now. Uh, so I don't see, uh, therefore, uh, a, a, a big contagion kind of an impact because of this one-off effect. But, but impact on retail sentiment, uh, which was my second question? Uh, we have had fresh, po uh, fresh uh, positive flows okay. <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> if I can. No, no yesterday's, yesterday's one of, uh, uh, what, what I'm saying is that if we have this kind of trend over the say, next two or three months where we see equities uh, worldwide, you know, become a bit of a hated word, uh, in that case, what happens to that money? It is, it is going to be a bit uh, challenging. It is not, uh, I'm, I won't be able to say conclusively one way or other that um, investors won't be perturbed or will be perturbed. It depends on how things pan out. But uh, the time period is also very important. How quickly it takes place or how long it takes to kind of uh, uh, this correction or this challenging environment continues. For example, people who have invested in Indian market six months back may not be having a meaningful return uh, yeah. six months by now, but uh, it's only six months. So they may be willing to continue their systematic investment plans or further allocation they may be willing to make. Maybe they themselves, when they started, uh, they started with small amounts and they are kind of uh, averaging it as it goes down. Uh, but if it kind of continues for another six more months and then the doubts will start uh, coming in and uh, which might uh, kind of slow down the further inflows into the market. Um, so it's kind of too early to say that whether the investor sentiments is going to be impacted because of uh, what happened over the last five, six months. But do you think that we could see more investment by retail investors in other asset classes in 2016 as opposed to 2015, say the likes of real estate, say the likes of maybe even commodities because a bounce back is expected this year, uh, your sense? Incrementally, some money can move into other liquid forms of assets, I would put mm, it. Fixed income. Uh, liquid mm -hmm. forms of assets is how I would put it. Maybe fixed, uh, maybe fixed income because yields have again gone up a little mm. bit. Maybe gold, uh, ETFs and, and maybe a little bit of uh, commodity-based uh, funds or exchanges. They can play for a bounce back. Uh, real estate would be a little bit tough because it's illiquid mm. and price correction is not as uh, high as it is in the other asset classes if you look at the gold prices or commodity prices or fixed income prices all of them have meaningfully corrected we are yet to see that meaningful correction in the uh, in the in the real estate thing at least uh, going by what is published prices uh, but if prices do correct, people might uh, alloc uh, reallocate, but I don't think the probability of that happening in 2016 is uh, high. Okay. Uh, Anand, let's talk about uh, the overall market scenario now. Uh, you know, the two big sectors, uh, banks and IT, they are not providing leadership to this market. Even in your funds, uh, uh, there's quite a bit of allocation, you know, as you would expect with the kind of weight that they have in the index. Uh, where do you see the market will get leadership at the index level, which is something which the market hasn't got all through last year? If you look at broad index, the, uh, the earnings for the current year is expected to be 9.5% growth. Next year, of course, the high growth is pretty high because of the low base effect. But uh, this year alone, if you look at 9.5%, 10% growth as the index earnings, uh, most banks, private sector banks, tend, probably would beat it. Mm. And uh, many IT companies also in rupee terms will probably beat that earnings growth. So actually it is not therefore factually fully right to say that they don't have earnings higher than the average, mm -hmm. actually have the earnings. But uh, if you have public sector banks and other kind of things added to it, it pulls down the average. But as a sector as a whole, 
I mean, private sector banks and IT companies will probably have earnings growth uh, better than the average market. Uh, where the, considering where the average is today, average has come down a lot, mm -hmm. average earnings growth. Next year might be challenging because uh, next year average expectation is pretty high. Growth expectation is still 19.5% kind of a growth. Will IT sector will match up to that kind of a growth is, uh, I, I don't think it's going to be easy for them. Mm -hmm. So earnings growth wise, uh, they may not be providing the leadership role, but their valuations are not very high. You know, so I, I, the stock returns may not be necessarily because of uh, earnings growth alone. It's a combination of earnings growth versus where the starting valuations are. And mm -hmm. there I don't uh, see the valuations to be too challenging uh, in, the, in, the, in the IT sector. Okay. Uh, well, I can't h help but ask this question because you have a Franklin India Pharma Fund and mm -hmm. your blue chip fund has Dr. Reddy's as one of its core holdings. I don't know if you've already trimmed positions on that one or what the uh, allocation stands at right now. But obviously, the last year has been plagued by US FDA issues for multiple top blue chip pharma companies. How do you evade the risk of the US FDA? Do you just stay put on your holdings and wait it out for the next two to three years? How does it work? The sector is going through uh, this particular challenge of moving up the value chain. Moving up the chain, value chain involves uh, upgradation of all the processes and systems and your practices. And where uh, we have had a serious challenges last year uh, when uh, US FDA intervened and issued warning letters. Mm. We view this as a natural progress of, uh, of the industry. Uh, if, the, if the companies want to go and do more complex uh, products, uh, if you are manufacturing oral solids, you need to have certain kind of uh, systems. If you want to do injectables, you need to do better things. Mm. You need to have more sterile uh, uh, situation, more, more better practices in the, in the manufacturing thing, um, because that's more profitable area to be in. So, so uh, I think uh, the consequence of moving up the value chain is this, is, of, uh, is the need to upgrade the systems and processes. And uh, we, we view that actually a positive uh, development because uh, it'll make these companies adopt better standards and practices over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And in the, in the meantime, if the markets seem to be disappointed with that, uh, I would look at that as an opportunity. Okay. A fairly large exposure to autos as well for you. Uh, uh, is that uh, going to be one of the preferred sectors in 2016 as well? Uh, we've seen a couple of stocks do remarkably well, like Maruti, for example, has done uh, phenomenally well. But we've seen a couple of stocks drag as well. Tata Motors, of course, a case in point. Uh, so this is, of course, stock-specific story. But overall, how would you approach autos? The domestic autos still are very best uh, positioned for uh, a good cyclical recovery. Uh, the discretionary spending coming back. Uh, spending coming back because of rising income, better uh, falling inflation, falling interest rates, whatever way you can uh, do it. So the domestic automobiles, whether it is domestic car manufacturers or two-wheeler manufacturers, are all well positioned for a reasonable uh, growth. They are all, they have capacities, they have the costs already embedded in. Some of the raw material costs are also falling, the steel, the aluminum, the rubber prices, all of them are falling. Uh, so they have a tailwind in terms of margins. Um, so, uh, so last year, despite all the challenges, even in two-wheeler sectors, many of the stocks pretty, did pretty okay after the initial uh, correction. So we continue to remain, it's probably the easiest way to pay the, uh, the discretionary spending coming back in the, in the economy. Uh, Tata Motors is, of course, a unique case of, it's more, it's more a global, global firm than, a, uh, than an Indian company. Okay. I just wanted a broader market question or answer from you. What is the biggest risk you, po you think uh, poses for equities in 2016? Would it be China, which we've already discussed, or say, for example, the GST not being passed in 2016 as well, or would it be something completely untoward? Say, oil prices bouncing back because of what's happening in terms of the geopolitical tensions in West Asia, and if that escalates to any uh, different level? Uh, risks uh, can be many. Uh, I mean, typically they are not uh, unidimensional; they the are multidimensional. Most prominent <laughs> risk. <laughs> so many of the things which you mentioned uh, are potential um, risks. But uh, the, for the market's perspective, not necessarily from the economic. Per eco economy is very resilient. I think it's not going to be very volatile mm. in terms of uh, um, growth or degrowth or whatever it is. The market requires a reasonably favorable global equity environment for the equity markets to do well. 
uh, which can be challenging because uh, even developed market, developed countries' markets, after having a ma U.S., Europe, after having a massive run for the last three, four, five years, are getting tired a little bit. So, mm -hmm. so that doesn't provide you a very great backdrop for the for any market to have a runaway uh, kind of a performance. If you look at the last 20 years, Indian markets have always done very well, only when the 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 global markets are supportive. Mm -hmm. They don't have to have be done doing very well, mm -hmm. but they need to be supportive. supportive. So whether that situation is going to be there is, is a bit of a uh, doubt. It's a, big, it's a reasonable risk. Commodities bouncing back is another risk which you mentioned, uh, especially the oil. Um, but I think markets are not fully pricing in $35 either. Market, if you really think about it, I think uh, the markets are probably pricing only about $50 in terms of the ben ultimate benefit. Uh, so I think up to a point in terms of a recovery in oil prices, uh, I don't think markets are going to, Indian markets are going to be uh, that much impacted fundamentally uh, from a commodity bounce back. But you can take it with some level of certainty that certain commodities are definitely going to uh, bounce back. Okay. So, so Anand, with so much global risk, uh, you know, as you, if you spoke about as well, do you think our market needs to adjust the valuation multiple a bit from the current, what, 15, 16 times or whatever we're trading right now to a slightly lower level uh, to, you know, again, you know, factor in all the global risks? Aggregate market valuation is a very tough call. I, I agree. It's an average of 30 or 50 companies yes. and sometimes it can be 500 companies. Uh, so to take a view on that will be tough. We as uh, fund managers can take individual stock view and can see how low the valuation can go. Mm -hmm. But typically the low valuation of one stock need not have to be coinciding with the low valuation of 30 stocks. Yeah. If you put low PE for all the 30 stocks, then historically whichever way they have ever achieved, then the, the index PE will be very low. Yeah. And but and that never happens. When the when a low PE of some stock happens, some other stock trades at a very uh, reasonable PE. Okay, so let me let me ask a di different question then. Uh, last year we saw, you know, the market was willing to pay premium for quality, and the you know expensive stocks kept getting more expensive, and the cheaper stocks kept getting cheaper. This year, do you think value will catch up, or will it still remain quality stocks at expensive valuation? It's quite possible that uh, rotation will happen in the current year. And uh, I think uh, the growth, the premium which the market was playing, uh, paying for growth, has kind of reached levels which may be tough to sustain. And market might cycle towards value, um, probably uh, as, as early as in the first half itself, but it can happen at any point of time. Uh, and it can be triggered by a bounce back of, uh, a corrective bounce back of commodity prices. It can be triggered by some macroeconomic development within India. Um, so it's, it may be a good strategy, therefore, to follow a blended approach of growth and value mm. rather than being pure growth uh, uh, at this point of time. Okay. Just a quick last question from me, Anand. Uh, Bharti Airtel is also part of your portfolio. We already have the call drop issue that we're going to have to deal with. We'll hear more about it tomorrow as well. But we also have impending competition from a big stalwart such as uh, Jio, which is coming in. Uh, your sense in terms of how telecom is going to look in 2016 fundamentally, as well as Bharti Airtel, uh, why do you like it? I think the sector is poised for significant consolidation. It is going through consolidation yeah. already. I think it will be poised for more consolidation. Mm -hmm. And with the entrance or entry of a new player, I think uh, luckily the, the, the launch was getting delayed, mm. is getting delayed. And that has given a lot of breathing space for existing uh, players to uh, at least get their act together. So many of them have rolled out their 4G networks, uh, the, mm. the LTE networks, which are as efficient as what is going to be an incoming network. So uh, had it happened a year back, this would have taken some market share quickly away from the incumbents. But it's going to be challenging for the new entrant to take the market share. Parallelly, we are seeing consolidation of existing players trying to either exit or partially merge with the other existing players. And, uh, and, and we see that as a very conducive environment for, environment for uh, the top three, two, three players to, to become more profitable. Uh, but this is going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight, and, uh, and there are challenges. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but our constructive view on the sector is, uh, is in spite of the fact of an imp impending 
competition. Um, on the other issue of call drop and the thing, mm. it, is a, it is a fact that the incumbents had not invested adequately uh, in, in the infrastructure which, uh, uh, which provided very high quality voice and data networks. I don't think they had done that for various reasons because competitive pressures have pushed the profitability of the industry low. They didn't have enough cash flows to go and invest uh, in high technology and providing the high class networks. So uh, I think now with the consolidation, it is giving more cash flows to the incumbents to increase, mm. improve the quality of the networks. So it will be a non-issue after a couple of years is how I would, uh, I would, I would look at that. Okay, one mm. final quick question then, Anand. Uh, it could be, you know, a bit uh, tough to ask a fund manager this, but uh, in the year 2016, uh, what is the probability that the market will reclaim its previous high? Or do you think it will be too tough an ask to, you know, go back to the previous highs? The underlying uh, uh, corporate growth trends are very important to uh, get to any new highs. And if I look at the, uh, if I slice and dice the corporate profitability of the top 500 companies, the one trend which is coming out is that the number of companies which are reaching new high in terms of profits is going up. Yeah. If five years back, 90 companies were generating new high in terms of profits, Today it's probably 220 companies whose profit in 2016 will be their life high profits. So this breadth, is, breadth of new high in terms of profitability is increasing and that's a very healthy trend mm -hmm. if you, despite all the macroeconomic challenges that we have. So we uh, as a bottom up investor have to only look at such trends to see as to is the market is in a safe trajectory. Uh, from a medium to longer term perspective and I think it is there. Mm. Whether it scales a new high uh, as an index level or not is a bit of a speculation. Fair enough Anand, thanks a lot for your time and thanks a lot for coming to our studios. Uh, so Thank that's you. the view from, from